What's up? This is Jay. So today's March 26th, 2020. I hope you're doing all right out there. So today we had the um, unemployment report come out. Some call it the jobs report, so on and so forth. And over 3.2 million people in the United States applied for unemployment. That is the biggest in the history of the United States. Huge numbers, huge because of this COVD-19 coronavirus outbreak, unfortunately. It sucks. It really does. Because you go on the streets and you'll see parked cars, you know, hardly anybody walking around. <clears throat> they, they, Like I, I mentioned yesterday, here in San Diego, they close the beaches. We love the beaches in San Diego. That's why we live here, right? I mean, come on. You know, they close the beaches. What's up with it? But they really don't want people gathering. And they want the, the 10 feet of separation. They're trying to protect everybody. It's understandable. You know, it. this is crazy. This is the first time I've ever been through this in my lifetime. If you've ever been through this and you're watching this in your lifetime, please make your comments by all means. And uh, tell us what happened if you lived through something like this. But um, if you do, in the meantime, if you like this channel, please subscribe. Because I'll be definitely be doing some more videos about money. Like today, we're going to go over some really cool things and um, money, the economy, how to get motivated, just different aspects of life. Even some areas of San Diego that I really enjoy. If you ever come out here, it's really neat. So with that, we're talking a little bit about money yesterday, how to budget your money, income expenses. And it occurs to me, hey, you know what? I better do a video. I better show these good folks out there on how to do that. So we got my little pointer device here, and I'll be pointing out some really cool things. So let's get started, all right, folks? So <clears throat> with this, I'll stand to the side a little bit here. With this, I, I apologize about my handwriting. It's not the best in the world on some of this, but hopefully it's uh, uh, legible if I got that word right. <laughs> so if you're making a monthly income or a bi-weekly income of two thousand dollars income is two thousand dollars monthly or bi-weekly we're going to break this down for a really really cool way really in a cool way so your expenses are fourteen hundred dollars and then those expenses they can be rent or mortgage uh well you can read that food gas bills etc now on top of that you like to give money and there's nothing wrong with that so you give you give a hundred bucks and then also you want to save some money on top of that. So you want to save $100. Now, I didn't put any money in here for investing for for reasons of just there's not really enough room on the board here. As you can see, it's pretty tight here. So going back to that, you save. So the total of that is $1,600 in expenses, which includes, again, rent or mortgage, food, gas, bills. You want to give one hundred dollars. You want to save one hundred dollars. The total is sixteen hundred dollars. So fourteen hundred plus one hundred, fifteen hundred plus one hundred, sixteen, sixteen hundred. What's left over after that is four hundred dollars. Okay, so you got four hundred bucks on a per month or on a bi weekly basis. How do you manage that kind of money? You know, it's 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 not a lot of money, but how do you manage it? There are ways to manage it that are very easy and you just have to remember a number very simple so what you do is you divide that four hundred dollars right by monthly if you're getting paid every month for example monthly by 30 days on average there's 30 days in a month i mean we have february the leap years and so on and so forth where you have 28 29 and sometimes some months come 31 but you know, on average, about 30, day, 30 days. If you want to divide it by 31, by all means, please divide it by 31. So we divide $400 by 30 days. That equals $13.33 a day to spend. That's all you got to remember. Basically, if you don't want to remember 33 cents, remember $13. If this would, for example, your income, you can do this in your own income and figure out. Now, every two weeks, bi-weekly, you divide that by 15 days, and that equals $26.66 a day in your mind. Now, that now these numbers, 13.33 a day with monthly and bi-weekly, 26.66 a day, you can just say, hey, I have 
$13 a day to spend until my $400 is depleted. Very easy, right? So let's say in two days that you decide, I'm not going to spend my $13 today. So then tomorrow, you do 13 times 2, right? Give or take $26 and some change. So you can go, cool, now I have $26 I can spend today because I didn't spend yesterday. Okay? I think you're getting the point here. I hope I'm making, I hope I'm making this a little clear here. And then you go, my $13 for today I didn't spend. I have $13 for tomorrow is in my budget as well on a daily basis. So I add those two up, and then I have $26. And then you start over the next day, $13. Or if you don't spend for two days and you go, I didn't spend money for two days. So $13 times two, 26. So you're like, all right, cool. And then you have the third day coming up. So you can also add another $13, which is 26, which would be 36, 37, 38, 39 dollars you have within that three-day budget window to spend. So that's really simple math. Um, on the bi-weekly basis, every 15 days is $26.66 a day. If you don't want to um, remember the 66 cents, just remember the, the prime number, $26. So $26, for example, today, you're like, I have $26 I can spend on a daily basis, but I didn't spend money today. And 26 times 2 is the equivalent of whatever. I'm not going to do the math, but, you know, so on and so forth. So then you're like, okay, I have those two 26 times 2 for, this, for the second day, 26 today, 26 tomorrow. I didn't spend for two days. I have 26 times 3 now, so on and so forth. But the uh, you can just remember $26 a day, every bi-weekly, again, if you're having $400 left over every two weeks. Okay, folks, now I, I hope that helped you understand how to simply budget and just remember like a prime number, a main number. So you take it, your, after everything's paid off your expenses, what you're left over, monthly divided by 30 days. If you have 31 days in that month, take that number, what's left over, divided by 31. If you have a bi-weekly, it's 15 days every give or take, you know, and if there's 31 days, you can st probably still use 15 days. It's not really going to harm you. Or you can just take it by 31 days and say, hey, this is what I have per day, and then that will equivalent to the 15 days. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, um, thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. If you're unemployed, as we talked about yesterday, I would definitely – you got laid off, unfortunately, so on and so forth. Definitely apply for unemployment if you're eligible. Try, you know, what what they're going to say, no. And then from there, you know, you, you'll, God willing, you get some unemployment, get some money back in your pocket. You know, start life a little bit, be humble. Not so much spending. Hopefully you'll be able to save from that unemployment. I know unemployment is not going to pay you as much as you would get paid every month or every two weeks that an employer would pay you, but one dollar is better than zero dollars coming in. I always remember that some investor friend of mine told me that if you're making one dollar, that's more one dollar than you had today than you had yesterday. So it's better than zero dollars. Anyway, so you know keep keep going. Yeah going back to your resume. If you're if you're unemployed, you want to start hustling legally, of course, like I said. Looking for that position, taking that position off the job board if you can. If you can't, try to do your best to remember what you did and maybe compare other positions out there. Like, for example, if you're in logistics and you're doing supply chain stuff, you're looking at um, your position. Hopefully, it's still on there, um, what you did on the HR site. You know, for example, I don't know who you want to work for, what, what your company is off the top of my head, but... If you look at Indeed, Indeed has a lot of positions, and hopefully the HR put your position on Indeed and left it there and forgot to take it off. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Because then you can take your job description based off of that, slam that into your resume in your own wording, of course, not HR's wording, because you don't want to do plagiarism word for word, so on and so forth. Even though it's a resume, there can be some rules out there that people say, hey, this looks like this rule if your company sees that. and you, possibly get in trouble. 
But anyway, so you do that, or there's another logistics supply chain out there that looks like your your job. So you want to add the, the things that you did that are applicable in that new resume to from that position to that job. I hope that makes sense. Apologize about a little confusion there. So just keep chugging away. Apply for positions. Network. Use Facebook, LinkedIn, any social media sites you can. Twitter, um, Pinterest, not really, because Pinterest I mean, is, is pretty much by pictures unless there's a little chat thing in there. Snapchat, too. Don't forget about that. You have friends on your Snapchat. Hey, I'm looking for this position. Does anybody know of somebody? Does it, do you know if somebody's hiring? Or if you don't, do you know somebody who knows somebody who might be hiring? Always use that second connection, kind of like LinkedIn has. Um, anyway, so thanks for listening. I hope this I hope this made sense. And if it doesn't make sense, review the video again or send me a comment, you know. Send me some comments. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. Send me comments. I'm open. I'm humble. I'm, I'm here for, for y'all to help understand money more and understand the economy and understand life as a whole. Obviously, I'm not going to get everything right. I don't give financial advice. But I try to help people understand on how I understand money. I used to do this system and it works very, very well because all you're doing is remembering one number. So here I'll have you take a look at it again really fast while I'm out of the way to, to, to help you understand this. Um, and from there, I just wanted to talk about a book that I had many years ago. Um, I do have a hard copy of it, but you can't get a hard copy of it on Amazon because I'm not selling hard copies. I'm just selling the, um, the versions of the soft copies. So here's the book here many years ago that I wrote. It's called How to Get Off the Financial Tightrope, What You Did Not Learn About Money in School. Okay? And there's a, here's a guy here. He's got all these stuff. He's got a suitcase. It's really, I remember going over the uh, the design for this. It was a lot of fun. You have mortgage, car payments, credit cards, foreclosures, bills. He's got all these things swallowing around him. And he's on a little tightrope here. Right? Hopefully you don't fall off. And uh, on there it says... Financial freedom. I don't know if you can see that. Financial freedom with the money signs there. So you can pick that up off of Amazon in the soft copy. Right now, it's only 99 cents. And what I'm thinking about doing is re revising this book, okay, into more economic times is what's going on here. So really fast, just to go through the book for a quick minute. In this book here is really neat. The table of content, okay breaks it down by days so you don't have to dive into this book and go crazy and think all these things so if you can see that it, it breaks it down by days very very easy to read for the common reader very easy to read um, it even talks about budgeting this it has some examples of budgeting the, there's different avenues of money it talks about. It's been a it's been a while since I've written this. I wrote this back in 2008, and it was really really good. The website on it actually I wrote it in 2008, but published it back in 2009. So the website on there is not applicable anymore. So you'll see that in there. But this is a book if you want to learn about money, pick it up. 99 cents. I have some other books on there. Two other books. 99 cents. What you did. What you must know about. Debt and saving money, another one for the military and veterans, which I think is very important for our military and veterans. I'm a Navy veteran to teach them about money, which right now there's not a lot of finance classes in the military, even to this day. If you can find one in your military, hey, grab it. If you're a veteran, you go to VA. If they're saying, hey, we're teaching about money, grab it. You can always learn more about money. Very important to understand this because this is the concept that we have to deal with every single day. Okay, so anyway, so. This is James Rudd. You can look under James Rudd again and just put financial tightrope on Amazon. And I uh, hope it helps you if you decide to pick it up. Please subscribe to my channel. Make comments. If I get a chance, I'll go ahead and reply. No problem. Hey, just remember, if you're unemployed, just keep moving. If you're not unemployed, if you have a job, awesome. Try to help other people if you hear of any uh, openings or anything like that within your company that they're hiring. Try to help other people that you know that are unemployed or if you have a friend or coworker at work that knows somebody and you hear about it that they're unemployed, 
and they have the right skill set, try to bring them in. Let's all try to help each other in this economy. You know, I know the social distancing thing is is a uh, is a is is a lot right now, but that's okay too. You know, we're all here to help each other uh, as Americans, and not just as Americans, but as a world. You know, we all we're all human, and uh, we're all trying to help each other. So God bless you. God loves you. Take care. I'm out.